Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. It's episode number 48 and today we're returning with two more big games with Brescia as face Monaco in match day two in the Champions League then Lazio at home in the Serie A as well. Before we get to the games though, shall Brescia be getting on off camera? And of course, in the last episode, you saw us get back on track after a tough start to the campaign with a win on match day one against Valencia, then the 2-1 win over Udinese away from home. Uh, two games in the run of camera, both in the Serie A, and both were wins, and the first one was a crazy, crazy game that probably should have been a draw. 3-2 uh, win over Sampdoria, and we started off conceding a penalty early on, second already this season, converted by Brian Robin, and two minutes later, CP14 scoring a deflected goal, but he claimed it his second of the season then Salcedo late on in the game with 18 minutes to go still tied at 1-1 scored an absolute thunderbolt from Ranger contender for goal of the season early then five minutes later Sampdoria got back on level terms really even close contest then they hit the bar then we hit the bar and it was six minutes to go Salcedo won it for us with his second of the game ensuring we would get the three points in a really really action back game should have been a draw both teams deserved a point but instead we were lucky to get the win and our final game of camera was a 4-0 win away against Hellas Verona right now, rock bottom of the Serie A, six defeats in their first six games for the newly promoted side. Uh, Sebastiano Esposito scored a first half hat trick, but it was one of the most bizarre hat tricks you'll ever see. First a penalty, then a bit of a strange goal, and then right before the break, um, he sly tackled the ball in from like one yard out. It was a really, really weird hat trick, regardless, free for Sebastiano Esposito. You can tell he wants that golden boot, man. Back to back seasons, he's been he's missed out on it due to first Ronaldo and then Immobile last season. This year, he's so bad he wants it. And uh, Franchi made it 4 0 late on, connecting with a Barbieri cross in a very convincing and routine victory. So, in this area, as you can see on the back of back to back wins, we are back in the top four, but two points behind Inter. Milan right now who like us are the only undefeated side left in the division but the feel good stories remain Bologna in second place five wins in their first six games what a start for them and one point of both in the table right now and Crotone in fifth place with four wins in six of all I love it when you see like a, an underdog come from nowhere and uh, battle the big boys for a European place that's what's happened to start the season off can they keep pace well I guess we'll find out but a great start for them and not a bad start for us after two draws in our first three. See the top scorer charts as well. Sebastiano Esposito is leading the way with six in six. You can see why Bologna right now are in the top four with Jonathan David having five in five for them. How's he developed in this save? He, he normally either does really well or pretty underwhelming and well his, his attributes aren't the best but his statistics certainly are. When did he go there? Oh wow he left on a free from KAA again. Wow. Wow, okay, fair enough. But um, anyway, uh, that's all there is to show you in the run off camera. I don't think anything else happened behind the scenes. So let's dive into the first of the two then. It is indeed Monaco, and I just realised with a late kickoff. Brilliant, well done me. But here we go. Uh, Monaco in the 8pm kickoff for match day two, and a win here could send us four points. Uh, sorry, f no, wait, yeah, four points clear at the top if results go our way in other games as well. So into the game, as you can see, we'll go back to the Gigan Press despite using the Tiki Taka in our last match, and this will be our team. Uh, right now, just one player is down, and it's Marco Moller, who I put in goal for the last game against Hellas Verona, because I knew we'd win regardless against the side rock bottom. He kept a clean sheet, first in the league this season, and then he pulled his calf muscle in training. Typical, right? So he's out for three weeks, and therefore we won't see him today. So this is our team, Ordero's in goal, but for his Pellegrini, Sistana, Armini De Pauli, with Storaro, Mergio, and Viviani through the middle, Salcedo and Picardi, the inside forwards with Esposito, red hot up top, and on the bench, Migliore, who's a, uh, a young teenager, 18 years old, on the bench, uh, Parola, Muru, Gavoni, Andre Anderson, Del Monte, and Franchi as well. First of two, it's Monaco away in France. Forwards of Russia, let's make it two from two in the Champions League. Sorry, just before we get into the game as well, I forgot to show you this. I talked about it on the season opener and I totally forgot to show you his stats. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, Emerson, uh, I did mention it in the season opener. He has now joined Arsenal from Chelsea in the summer. He was on the transfer list. Arsenal snaps up for 25.5 mil, but I believe there's clauses included in that deal as well. And as much as we loved him after his incredible loan spell of us last season, I wasn't going to pay that for a 30-year-old that will turn 31 during the season. I think I made the right choice as well. He's the only place two league games for Arsenal. I don't think he's been in the Italy squad either since he joined the Gunners and um, yeah, I think I made the right choice to let him go there to the Emirates Stadium and you know, maybe once his contract runs down in three years time, we'll snap him up on a free a, a classic veteran doc signing. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see but that's what happened to Emerson anyway and uh, Pellegrini. Oh, the red arrow. 
Paris. Pellegr I thought I made the right choice. Pellegrini's coming instead. I think I made the right call there. Anyway, Monaco, of course, drew against KRC Genk in the first game in Belgium. But after our 3-0 win against Monaco, whilst we are still technically the underdogs for this game, I'm targeting back-to-back -back wins, baby. Let's go do it. Let's make a statement. We're a big boy now. Let's go prove it. I'm targeting top spot in this group. I really am. I know last season, I debuted in the Champions League. I was saying, oh, you know, if we finish in second, I'll take that every day of the week. But in this group, honestly, man, I'm targeting top. I think we've got what it takes to top this group. 29 minutes in, still 0-0. Wouldn't be a bad result this, though. A, uh, a goal to throw away against Monaco. But again, a win would be huge. But there's nothing going on. Typical route. We have a 4-0 victory against Hellas Verona. A great five-goal thriller against Sampdoria. And in this game, nothing to report until now is Armini, who scored on match day one. Heads that Storaro free kick just over the bar. Being the better team statistically, though, keep this up. And I'm sure we'll find a clear-cut chance. And I believe we'll find a goal. KRC Genk, though, holding their own. First a goal to draw against Monaco. And they're tied 0-0 at Valencia right now. Crazy. Give those boys some credit. I said they were going to be rock bottom of this group and claim the wooden spoon. But instead, fair play to them. Fair play. Oh, no, Valencia have just gone in front now right before the break. Oh, sorry, no, is that... How, how was that not a half-time? A half-time, it said it was nil-nil. But that goal must have come in stoppage time. Oh, I guess maybe our, game, our first half finished before theirs did. It's Bacardi on a nice move. Goes for goal and sits it straight at Anthony Lopez. Still nil-nil. And again, I'll take the point. We've been a better team. Let's keep it going and find a winner. Monaco haven't really threatened at all in this game, so I believe we keep on staying in attack mode. We'll find that chance to get ourselves in front. If it falls to Sebastiano Esbozito, right now unstoppable, then you know he's going to take it. And Eddie Salcedo on the ball right now, to be fair to him, has also looked incredibly impressive early on this season. Darts from left to right and finds CP14. Back to Viviani. Lovely first-time ball to set up to Pauli, who is tackled, wins it straight back. You know he can cross him. And Bacardi puts it just over the bar. One of those moments where it lags, which happens with me quite often, and you think it might have gone in. But sadly, just over. Still 0-0. Both our CMs on a book, and I think I'll leave them on for now. And for Monaco's sake, they really need to get going if they're to have any chance of claiming their first win in the Champions League this season. Danny Sevalos through to Golovin, cut out by Fabio De Paoli. And we shall build from the back as he sends it long. And Sebastiano has got a lot of work to do. Wisely controls, plays it backwards as we'll build our way forward patiently. Picardi to Salcedo. Can he keep it in play? He should do. He does indeed. Eddie to Pellegrini. Chance is coming. Goal's coming. There it is. Pellegrini with the cross. Picardi with the finish. Third of the year already for CP14. Marking that contract extension. 1-0 Brescia. He's really stepping up his game now. He is really, really elevating it. Pellegrini with the cross. His first assist since coming in. And Bacardi heads home at the back post to make it 1-0. Ten minutes to go. Hold on to this. And we'll be three points clear at the top. Almost there. Five minutes to go. Monaco haven't really troubled us all game long. But now I've said that. I watched him get the equalising goal. But Armini says to Anthony Martial, that's mine, son, as we win it straight back. And we'll pass our way forward. Monaco have not threatened at all in this game. What a lovely run by Picardi. Brilliant work from the young man. And oh, selflessly finds Esbozito. In fact, it's not going to be his assist. It must have been a tackle by Danny Sevalos. I thought CP40 with a lovely little no-look pass in Sebastiano there got the assist. But instead, it's not his assist, but it is Esbozito's goal. Eighth of the year for Sebastiano. Two in Europe, six in the league. He's averaging one goal per game. And it was indeed a tackle by Sevalos, but Esbozito cleans up the mess. 2-0 Brescia, points in the bag. We're going three points clear. And that will do it. Valencia's win over Genk does mean that we look like the front runners to start the campaign off. But we have been the strongest team so far. That was really special, lads. Nobody gets a chance, but you played magnificently. Congratulations. I love the body language. Composed, confident, and convinced my team out there. Especially the captain being so convinced. You love to see it. Soon the final score. And where is it? Yeah, Valencia did win by a single goal to nil. But to be fair to KRC, Genk held their own for the most part. I've got to say, we've got them next. On match day three, is that home or away? That is away in Belgium. And if we win that game, nine points on the board already. I'll definitely fancy our chances, not just qualifying, but topping the group as well. But I'm looking forward to that battle, man. KLC Genga holding their own right now. So moving on, second and final game, Lazio at home. We've only had the one win against them 
in this series because it came last season, a big 3-0 victory at the Stadio Olimpico that really propelled us to our title run towards the end of the campaign. Uh, Napoli beat Fiorentina in the earlier kickoff, just to quickly process through that one. But um, yeah, here we go, Lazio, and a win in this game will send us top of the table, if only for a few hours. Same to the game, as you can see, we'll stick with the Gigan press and play the same starting 11, but Muru did pick up an injury in training with a gashed upper leg, so he'll be out for a few days and thus will miss this match. But I'm not sure I mentioned it either, but uh, Pellegrini, um, he did win his first cap for Italy as well uh, since he signed for us too. So, yep, you join Brescia, you win international caps. Well, not really because he's one of the few that has. But anyway, this will be our team. Odero in goal. Back four, Pellegrini, Sestana, Armini, Depaoli, Storimo, Gio, Viviani through the middle. Once again, Sassano, Picardi, the inside forwards, and Esposito up top, so no change there. On the bench, Migliore, Pirola, Bonifaz, Papetti, Piscucci, Barbiero, De Sisto, Gavoni, Onder, Anderson, Dalmonte, Franchi, and Borelli as well. Second and final game. Let's get our second win against Lazio. Go top of the table, at least for a few hours. Falls of Russia. So first highlight, falling early as so we'll play out from the back here. But it's a standard heavy touch. Saw him dribble straight into Boadu and Odero makes a great save to bail out Andrea and keep it at 0-0. Emil Odero coming up big, still 0-0. Yeah, I put Moller in for the Hellas Verona game. And so far, that's our only clean sheet. I would have kept him in against Monaco had he not got the injury. But now Odero got his second clean sheet of the season, both in Europe there against Monaco. I'm looking for him to pick it up, man. And in these sort of games, he's fired up as well. He's got to come up big because he knows he'll be under pressure. Still 0-0, 12 minutes to go in the half. I think I'll take this, though. And we've kept the veteran striker Shiro Amoble quiet as well. He won the golden boot. Uh, last year and a little bit of interesting fact on Immobile as well I was very close and I mean very close to signing him in the summer as well uh, my scout suggested he could have been signed for about five to six million pounds I put a 5.5 mil bid in it got accepted straight off the bat and had his wage demands not been so high I would have picked him up I know he's in his mid-30s right now but last year won the golden boot he's got incredible stats he's one of the best strikers in Europe as Pellegrini has tripped and a penalty for Brescia as well for sure but uh, yeah we accept it Lazio accepted a bid but Immobile wanted like 130 grand a week which quite frankly for a player of his age I was not going to put him on as we back up to Sebastian Sebastiano is Bozito. Regardless, penalty for Brescia and a chance for Sebastiano to keep his record going and make it 1-0. Go on, Sebastiano. Keep it going, son. Seven from seven in this area. You know you want this golden boot from Shiro. And he's put it into the bottom corner as well. Brescia in front, Esbozita with a goal. And yeah, for Immobile too. His time has come, man. His time has come as Italy's most lethal striker. Now it's Sebastiano time. Brescia in front, Sebastiano never in doubt, 1-0. His stats are incredible, but again, he's 34 and will turn 35 during the season. He'd be the perfect veteran for us as well. He's out of contract in the summer. Hopefully, Lazio will let him go on a free, but let's be honest here. Sebastiano now, he's the king. He's the king of Italian strikers. 20 minutes to go, still leading by one. Can we close it out and possibly add a second? Paoli plays the one-two of Esbozito, beats his man, skips around him. Can he cross? No, we'll find Esbozito. Picardi is there. There's Sebastiano, dispossessed, and Lazio will clear. And here is the old man with his ears burning. Play through Boadu with Sistana to beat. You know he's got the pace, but there's Ordero with the save. Almost there, uh, almost there. Uh, corner for Lazio though, and Sistana missed it. It'll be picked up down the left, fizzed across in. Frankly, misses everyone, but Yedvai recovers possession for Lazio, desperately trying to find an equalising goal here. They've had a tough start to the season. They could really do with a point. Vigna's cross-blocked. Picardi wins it back and hoofs it long. Come on, don't throw it away. Cross the middle. Offside. 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 Definitely no doubt about it. Boadu would have finished. That's never going to count. And as I always say, if I can spot it, we don't need the VAR. It's clearly offside, man. Well offside, Boadu there. And uh, was there two players? I was like, yeah, two players a mile offside. And uh, Lino, well, Lino got it wrong. VAR gets it right. 1-0 still. Can we hold on? Seconds to go in the game, and there it is. Brescia back on track, baby. No doubt about that. Another victory. That's now, what, six straight after back-to-back -back draws. Much, much, much more like it. And again, for defensive reasons, too, I'm very happy indeed. Tough start defensively now. Three clean sheets on the bounce in all competitions. But for Bologna's sake, you can't stop them right now. 3 0 win against Lecce, and they remain top of the table with six in their first seven. Go on, lads.
And we'll process through the evening kickoffs and end the episode there. Milan at home to Atalanta and Juve versus Inter in two very good clashes. And as Milan beat our rivals by two goals to one, they now jump into third. And as for Juventus versus Inter Milan, we're hoping for a Juve win there. And it finished 1-1 courtesy of a 95th minute equaliser by Leroy Sane. So there you go then. The table looks like this. Seven games into the season in which everyone has played. No one has the game in hand. Bologna, the feel-good story after a red-hot start. They lead the way. Us and Inter closely beat behind just a point uh, a point behind them right now and Milan with 16 points as well long way to go and despite a tough start with two draws in our first three we pitched up with four straight wins let's keep it going Forza Brescia but that was this episode of Club and Country guys we thank you for watching really hope you have enjoyed if you did then please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day I'll return with games against I'll miss out match day three in a Champions League against KRC game but come back on match day four against them and Juventus as well where if we win in Belgium we'll be one win away from qualifying with two games to spare have a great day guys much love and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon